Okay, guys, so today I'm going to read to you Johnny Appleseed, and I'm reading it on the computer instead of reading it to you in person because I want you to be able to go back when you need to cite the text, right? So we're going to read this, and then we're going to write about Johnny Appleseed using the race strategy that we've been using, but I want you to be able to go back into the text when you need to find your support, when you're citing your evidence. You might not remember exactly what I said, so you can go back and look, right? And you can use the pictures to kind of help you because I'm going to show the pictures on the screen too. All John Chapman, who later became known as Johnny Appleseed, was born on September 26, 1774, when the apples on the trees surrounding his home in Massachusetts were as red as autumn leaves. Johnny's first years were hard. His father left his family to go fight in a war, and his mother and his baby brother had both died by his second birthday. By the time John turned six, his father had remarried, and they settled down in their town in Massachusetts. And within a decade, which is 10 years, he had 10 other brothers and sisters. But nearby, they had an apple orchard, and Johnny would go there to get peace sometimes. Watching the apples grow inspired Johnny to have a love of nature. The animals sensed his gentleness and his trust. So they trusted him too. John walked hundreds of miles throughout the Pennsylvania forest when he grew up. He decided he wanted to be a pioneer. He would look for new friends to make and help nature out. When storms struck, he found shelter in a hollow log or he built a lean-to, which is like the teepees that the Native Americans lived in. On clear nights, he stretched out under the stars. Over the next few years, John continued to visit and care for his new orchards because every time he went to a new place, he planted apple seeds to remember where he's been and to help plants and animals and people. One spring, he, meant to, he met a band of men who boasted that they could lick their weight in wildcats. That means that they can kill them really good. Johnny was sad. He never wanted to hurt animals. So he challenged them, instead of killing wildcats, why don't we instead wrestle? And Johnny was the best wrestler of all. Then he convinced them all to help chop down some of the trees they needed for firewood and to make new homes. When the sawdust settled, there was no question who came out on top. Johnny had tricked them all into working hard and helping each other and not killing animals. During the next few years, John continued to move westward. He always brought apple seeds and he liked the eastern cider ones the best. Other families in search for new homes were also moving west and many met Johnny along their way. He loved to help others and was so happy that those trees would be there to help them eat some apples on their journey. John went out of his way to lend a helping hand to his new neighbors. He would often give away his little trees that he had, his seeds, and even help them build their homes. Then he would come around the fire and tell stories to the children. Some say John used to sleep in a treetop hammock with the birds, and others remember that a rattlesnake had attacked his foot. Fortunately, Johnny's feet were as tough as elephant's hide, so it didn't even hurt him. It was said that Johnny had once tended to a wolf who was harmed, and he also played with bears. As the years passed, Ohio became too crowded for Johnny. He kept moving west to India, and he continued planting orchards, which are apple trees that are all together. Johnny got older, and his stories continued to follow him. People knew about him all over the United States. People argued about exactly how his story went and exactly all of the good things that he did. But some say 
that he was living currently in Mississippi. Some say the Rocky Mountains or even California. Nobody was sure where he had ended up. But everyone claims to have seen Johnny Appleseed. All right, guys. So this book is a fable. So it is also known as a tall tale. So a lot of times they start out as like a realistic story about a person, but then they exaggerate things. So he living at home with 10 other siblings, that could really happen. Him moving away from home and maybe even living in the woods for a little bit could probably happen. But is he really going to play with bears, roll around with them and they don't hurt him? Probably not. Did he really go all of that way walking on foot? Probably not, right? But he did some of those journeys and maybe he did them with a cart, not on foot. So they've exaggerated it. So it's called a fable. So what you're going to do is you're going to write about Johnny Appleseed, okay? So I left sentence starters in the Google Doc for you to help you. But if you need to come up with new ideas to fill in my blank spots, you can go back and re-listen to the story, okay? The directions are also in Google Classroom. If you've watched this video twice and you still need help, then you can ask me.